John Seville. Let's talk about John a little bit. John is um, Australian, so you're going to love the accent for the rest for the next hour. Uh, John and I have worked also very closely. Again, I told you I brought in all my favorites today. It's a very fun session for me. But John Seville is um, somebody that runs a trading school up in Canada. Uh, does a lot of online training with people, offers some really great value for what he does. And he's got a, co a, a company that's uh, a very growing very fast. I will say that uh, his methodologies are very sound and very solid. And uh, we certainly appreciate him coming in today as well to kind of give us a presentation. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change the presentation over to him, going to make sure um, that we can see a screen and then we're going to kind of get him get him rolling with us today. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, Johnny. Oh, um, let's go ahead and have you um, talk. I can't hear you. Testing one, two, three. Oh, there's <laughs> that beautiful out. voice. I can see your screen too. <laughs> Hey, look cool. That's perfect. I am amazed at how well this technology is run. I, uh, uh, Dave and I have been talking in the office, and I think, uh, I think we, we we're big fans of GoToWebinar. Um, you know, so far it's no flaws at all. Um, anyway, Johnny. Well, I, I hope I'm not the exception to the rule, Jeffrey. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully not, but um, <laughs> we can hear you good. I'm going to let you start talking, and I'm just going to get out of the way. Okay, perfect. Uh, well, good. And, uh, well, thanks, for everybody, for uh, for waking up early or late, I guess, depending on where in the world you are. <laughs> where is our trading school? Canada? Vancouver, actually. Um, but, uh, yeah, so um, uh, great to have you all here. Um, it was great to listen to Stephen talk about uh, scans and, uh, you know, making sure that efficiency is in our favor. And uh, we're going to continue along with that line and uh, talk to you a little bit about um, uh, trading with profitable trades and targets. And the, the, the context of which I want to focus on today is uh, flag formations. And uh, for those of you who already know what flag formations are, that should be exciting. For those of you who don't know what flag formations are, um, it's a pleasure for me to introduce that to you. So um, that is the topic today. We're going to talk about finding flags, uh, how to um, scan for them, and, the types, and why we choose flags as one of the most highly probable and profitable patterns uh, that is out there. Now, um, uh, obviously, a standard disclaimer up on the screen. And uh, Bill, yes, and we will be talking about the smart money as well. Uh, just a, um, yes, we will be talking about detecting the smart money. Okay, so um, basic introduction to us, for those of you who uh, haven't met us already. The, uh, we were founded back in 2007 by myself and a small group of traders. And uh, I came to the market with a very fundamental predisposition. Uh, my father was in mining, um, still is. And, uh, you know, I always found it frustrating to see stocks go from 20 cents to $2 and back to 20 cents with no fundamental change in the company. And, and that's, of course, why technicals started becoming predominantly the focus of how I traded. Um, we started in 2007, and uh, in June 6, 2008, we had key signals when the smart money told us, hey, uh, time to get out. And uh, that was kind of where we put our stamp on the map because we uh, were able not only to avoid the crash but actually make money from it. And um, again, that uh, same type of signal happened in, um, I think it was May of 2010, and again recently, in fact, uh, where we were able to benefit from the drop that we've recently seen on the S&P 500. And uh, right now, uh, understanding these types of technical signals and where smart money is going is very important because uh, we have such a strong divergence across the market of where things are going. And I'm just going to try, just very quickly try and make my volume a little bit higher. Can everyone hear me okay? I'm going to see if I can turn it up a little bit. There we go. All right, I'm just going to see if we can up it a little bit further. Great. Okay. <laughs> 
Wonderful. Okay, so the um, yeah, I mean, we've got this divergence, right? I mean, and, and that's that's what the stock market is. I mean, different opinions is what makes the investment world interesting. But right now, we have strong, strong reasons why we should be doubting the normal decision methods that we uh, we we, we, we uh, used to follow. Um, we can see that central banks have been pumping money into the economy. Um, you know, we, if we, if we go a step further, we can talk about the fact that. Uh, you know, we were at all-time highs going into the beginning of this year. Uh, I think 96% of people that try use the stock twit um, feature were saying, "Yeah, we're going to go, we're going to go higher when we enter 2014." That's scary. Um, optimism amongst market players, IPOs, uh, new technologies. I mean, think about the companies that have been leading this rally: you know, Yelp, Twitter, Facebook. You know, like um, companies that really um, Tesla. Companies that people are having trouble really putting a value on. Um, you know, we picked DDD Systems for a short uh, earlier this year from 70 down to uh, 56, which did extremely well. And one of the main reasons was it's simply no one really knows how to value these things, right? So this is what's kind of leading the market. Uh, the, the brick and mortar investments like. Um, the emerging markets and so forth have been crumbling, and um, we, we're faced now with a decision of, with so much, um, with, with so many question marks, how do we formulate a well-structured, rule-based strategy going into this uh, going into this scenario? So uh, it's tough. So let's first start with uh, kind of a an overall question, and um, please uh, throw this up into the uh, chat room because I uh, I always find that different groups have different temperaments. But what kind of investors do we have? Are we mostly day traders here? Are we swing traders? Are we long term investors? Swing, okay, wonderful. Or <laughs> someone asked me this recently. They said, "What kind of trader are you, John?" I said, "I'm a profit trader." <laughs> I don't really care if it takes three hours or three days or three weeks, as long as uh, it hits my target. Lots of swing traders. That's fantastic. Day traders, great. Okay, so let's get past that. I want to ask a more important question, uh, because no one can predict time, right? I mean, when you look at a chart, you have three pieces of information. You have price, time, and volume. You can't predict time. But we can, I would argue, predict Price and volume. So when we um, when we talk about uh, our decision making process, I always like to also ask this question: How do most people make their decisions? Most people that I've talked to, who are educated, intelligent investors, usually make their decisions based on one of these four things: um, news, friends, newsletters and brokers, or things they're familiar with. And this is a photo, of course, of Vancouver, and that's where I'm sitting right now. But um, none of these things have anything to do with timing. And, and, and that's when we start to get into strategies and flag formations and things like that, um, it's all about timing. Because you might do all the research in the world and, uh, and figure out that, yeah, you know, you've, you've, you've overcome this great company that's going to go from $5 to $50. And all the background research is good. They've got great management, great fundamentals. But you haven't been able to uh, um, latch on that the smart money is still selling them because they want to drive it down to one before it goes to 50. And, and let's say you're a buyer at five. Well, you're going to have a very tough ride as it plummets to one before it potentially goes up. And, um, and, uh, and this is something that's, uh, I, I think, common. Uh, most traders or investors, they, they have you know, good ideas, they've read all the books, the stock market, the dummies, da 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 but timing and, and having an executable, process-driven plan is where they uh, sometimes fall short. So while we're thinking about all these good ideas, we, what we really need to also add to that is an understanding that with an idea only, without timing, Without a rule-based timing system, you know these are the kind of issues that we're going to run into. And uh, for anyone who hasn't read this book, there's a book called Wandering Through Wall Street. Uh, I think it was written over 10 years ago because I heard about it about eight years ago. Um, 
and it talks about that, the fact that uh, anything that most investors generally lead their decisions by is already factored into the market anyway. It, it's baked into the pie. So this is obviously why perhaps 95% of investors lose money, because they're investing emotionally, uh, they lack a strategy, and, uh, and this, we get constant reminders as to why we should uh, be looking at emotional decision making, because there's so much noise. So come back, this is, uh, I, uh, I had one of my colleagues take over one of these presentations the other day, he replaced this photo, um, and I was upset, because this is my favorite photo in any one of the lessons that we teach. Because if you were to sit down and someone was to hand you a crayon and a piece of paper and ask you to draw exactly what a stock would look like when you were to buy it, what would it be? Do you know the answer to that question? You know, so what would the candlesticks say? What would it, where would it close in its range? What would the volume be doing? What sector would it be in? What are the insiders doing? What are the institutions doing? What's the P2E ratio? And you can go into great depth and levels of data if you want to, um, but regardless of how far deep you go, you should at least have a list, because you wouldn't go out and buy a car without knowing what type of car you're buying. If you went out for a four-door sedan that could uh, carry your kids in their uh, sports gear in the back and you came back with a two-door convertible and spent twice the budget, you'd be in trouble, right? But every single day, people do this with stocks. They go out and buy things that have really no checkpoints against their criteria. And so I would argue that before we even start talking about strategies and indicators and scans, what you need to know is what you're looking for in the first place. So this, is, this, this uh, idea, this visual idea is about talking about the idea of sitting down and kind of saying, this is a checklist that we're looking for. And once we've found that, once we've found that perfect chart, then and only then do we start applying indicators. Because indicators answer a question, a yes, no response, generally. But unless we know the question we're asking, that answer is arguably invaluable. And again, another problem why most people who uh, approach trading, who get the basics and might be well informed, don't make money because they don't have a consistent strategy where they have the same set of questions that they're asking and, and it's the same set of variables that they're looking for. And if you don't know where you're going, you don't know what you're looking for, any road will take you there. So when we started designing our strategies uh, 10 years ago, I guess eight years ago now, um, we, we, we came back to more of a fundamental question uh, of saying, well, before we start imposing our will on the market, let's, 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 let's understand it first. Let's ask ourselves who controls the market in the first place. And um, the people that uh, control the market is volume. So who controls the volume? The smart money. So the smart money represents, they estimate, roughly 70 to 80% of all of the volume in the market. And so, so 70 to 80% of all the trades that get executed on a daily basis are coming from a computer. And these bots, are making those decisions based on preset algorithmic functions. Okay, so let me let me throw an example out there. I, I, I like to teach in analogy, so I apologize uh, for anyone who shared this one before. But think of a think of a football game. Um, now, if, if you're watching a U.S. football game, there's two teams, two coaches. Each coach has what a, a book of what a book of plays, and in that playbook, they, um, they know where, if they call a certain kind of Hail Mary or so forth, the players know exactly where they're running to and how they're going to get there, who's going to throw the ball and who they're going to throw it to. To an observer, it looks like chaos. To the coaches, it's a well-executed pattern. So when we look at the stock market, I liken it to this. 
because essentially when you have computers making uh, decisions such as this where they're churning over billions of dollars, they have to do it using rules. They have to do it using patterns. So the trick is to figure out what the rule system is behind the patterns that they're using. And this is where the smart money comes in. So we've seen the evidence of this. Um, flash crashes in May 2010. We saw the NASDAQ getting shut down last week, excuse me, last year, because they apparently tripped over a power cord. Uh, and, and we've seen massive reactions in terms of the volume. The, the benefit for those of you who are sitting there saying, well, John, if, 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 if the high frequency traders, if the algorithms are so powerful, what chance do we have? Well, the beauty in this is that we can reverse engineer it. We can figure out how they buy because they're doing the same thing again and again and again. So for anyone out there with an engineering background, when something follows the same set of rules millions of times in repetition, you can actually reverse engineer that. So the, the fundamental drive behind every strategy that I follow is actually detecting that pattern detecting when the smart money is buying or selling because they're the ones that ultimately control the volume behind the move. So let's get into the nitty gritty. The first fundamental, I guess, core argument behind every strategy that we follow is understanding that each stock or believing that each stock will never change direction unless it hits one of the two things, horizontal, trend line, or moving average support and resistance. So when we uh, look at a chart, we understand that algorithms don't see this. They, they simply see levels. And it's how the um, stock interacts with these levels that we're more interested in. So when we see a flash crash, we're looking at where those levels reverse. And assuming that, that, that because of this, it's likely to reoccur again. And that becomes a buy target. As we apply it to stocks, Detecting when that fingerprint of the smart money has occurred allows us to look at potential re-entry points at a later time. The first step to doing this is being able to find where the strongest, highest probability levels uh, for the smart money lie. Now, when you're detecting the smart money, again, we, we want to come back to some, some core concepts. We want to think about how does smart money buy? And, and I answered that question in part earlier by talking about the fact that computers are the ones driving these decisions. So let's go back one more level. How do computers buy? Well, they buy based on rules. One equals one, therefore do this. So when a computer buys, or when an algorithm buys, it buys instantly. It has to. Um, so when we're looking at a chart and we're looking for the evidence of a smart money purchase, we're looking for that type of aggressive reactionary response to a price being broken or hit. So when I'm looking at a chart, the very first thing and most important thing that I'm looking for is how price has reversed and how volume has acted along with it. So let's just draw on. I talked to you about the crayon. There's an ideal chart. There is an ideal chart that if you were asked the same question once more that I did five minutes ago, I would say that would be a pretty good response. Let's look for a chart where the stock has plummeted, let's say this represents 20%, and as it dropped, volume decreased, showing us that there was a, a, a weakening supply of sellers as the stock dropped. And then once it hit a support zone, buyers rushed in instantly. Instantly is the key word. There's an ideal chart. And what we want is we want a, a strong drop, a strong instantaneous reversal, and increasing volume on that level. 
Would smart money be option traders? Absolutely, Scott. In fact, I would argue that the option traders are the, the smarter money if you were to choose between equities versus options. Okay. And we'll get into that when we get into the Q&A uh, in a little bit. So that's the first checkpoint. The second checkpoint is we want to see then what happens uh, in terms of when it retests. So here's a quick question. How many of you would, if you were to buy this stock, let's say this re level represents 10 bucks, how many of you would want to see the stock hit $10 more before you hit it? Before you bought it? And how many would you, how many of you would you prefer that it hit it less? Just throw that in the question box. Would you prefer that it bounced more times or less times? <laughs> this is such a great question because it, it's, it's such a 50-50 split. So when I first started trading, uh, when I professionally, um, for the first five years, I always thought the answer was more. Because logically, the more times it hits it, obviously the stronger it is, right? Wrong. Think back to that example I told you before. Think about that football game. If I was the coach, um, let's say I represent the, the, the Broncos, okay? So I'm the, I'm the Broncos coach and I say, hey, throw that Hail Mary. And we do, and we win, we win a point. Then I throw it again, and again, and again, and again. What happens to the defense? How effective is my strategy? It drops. So the more times the strategy in the market is hit, the less effective it becomes because we, the market realizes it. So basically the final point we want is a fresh level. And that's right, uh, one, more than two would short, exactly. As soon as something is hit, I use the rule of three. So more than three times, I would short it. And that's how we get patterns like descending triangles. So just to summarize, the key thing, if we ever see a chart, is to wait for strong, fresh levels. And that's where we want to have an action point. And the final point is we also then want to make sure that when we hit those levels, we get a nice aggressive reaction. So if we were to give the, the option between two potential trades to short, we'd be going for B rather than A. So this is why, this is how we detect smart money. We're looking for the way that a chart reacts at a certain level. At least it's the first way we detect smart money. And this becomes very important because if we can look at where a market is going to turn, now we can start pre-programming trades by looking for these strong, fresh, powerful levels and where volume correlates with that break. And if you want to look at an example of how powerful smart money can be, look at this. This is uh, Aaron's, A-A-N. Strong reversals of horizontal levels. Longs and shorts. Now, one of the things that this now leads into is talking about our ability to now find trades using the smart money detection. And, um, and being able to scan for these, which of course is where efficiency starts to step in. And obviously through the, uh, the plethora of fantastic speakers that we've had today, um, thanks to Metastock and uh, uh, the event we've had today, we're able to understand that probability also now comes in the form of picking what type of um, patterns we want to get into. Now the pattern that I'd like to focus on today is flags. It's a very powerful, um, uh, a very powerful strategy for most market conditions, whether it's uh, whether we're oscillating, whether momentum, whether we're sideways conditions. It's a, it's a very strong performing pattern. 
because essentially what the the, um, the flag formation does is it's tracking where the big smart money moves are about to occur. Now, how many people here have traded flags before? Lots of people. Good. What's been the main problem for people who've traded flags? What has been your major, I guess, obstacle to being successful with it? Timing. Getting in too late. False breakouts. <laughs> You're doing my job for me, guys. This is too easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, these are the problems, the wrong breakout, yeah, I mean, this this is the problem that I had, I mean, I, I we all love flags, I mean, for those of you who don't know flags, flags are one of the highly, most highest ranks, uh, highest ranked strategies in the, uh, in, in the rule book of patterns. Um, I'm just going to uh, try and make the volume a little higher, I'm not sure, Jeff, if we can increase my speaker volume, but I'll, uh, I'll do my best to speak as close to the mic as I can. All right. Okay, hopefully that's a little bit better. Okay, so let's, um, let's bring this up. So I'm going to bring up my Metastock platform here. And just let me know if you can see that okay. Everyone see that? Wonderful. Okay, great. So, what is a flag? Well, firstly, there are over a hundred commonly used patterns in the market. We have, you know, and, and, and you all know them, you've, you've heard the buzzwords, we've got double tops, double bottoms, triple bottoms, diamond formations, ascending triangles, rising wedges, blah, blah, blah. Um, the first thing that we should establish when, we, when we're talking about these types of terminology is that each pattern is different. Every pattern works. You can make money at any one of those. But each pattern has different probabilities. So some patterns are highly probable with maybe uh, when they win, they make 10% average profit. You've got other patterns that are less probable that might only go correctly half the time, but when they're right, they make 50% profit. You could have um, patterns that are very improbable. You, know, so you, you get different kind of criteria to define how patterns work and, and why they work and when they work. So what we did when we started out with Acorns, we analyzed these hundreds of patterns and started to rank them on a basis of probability, predictability, and profitability. Because, and that was the main problem with flags, because flags are highly probable and highly profitable, but the problem I always had was predicting them. I could never seem to find enough that would warrant specializing in that strategy uh, until recently. So um, the reason flags work so well is because they are um, kind of self-driven economies. They're stocks that have massive breakouts. Um, we're looking at one here. Stocks that have a massive breakout. We're looking at $4 to over seven. Pull back and then rally once more. Usually an equal amount to how much they originally rallied from. So firstly, what is the definition of a flag? When we find a flag, what we're looking for is we're looking for a, um, a breakthrough. If you have a pen and paper, the checklist is we're looking for the stock to have broken through a static line. 
So we're on this chart we're looking at here. So the stock has broken through a horizontal or diagonal static line. And at the time of breakthrough, a huge amount of volume has coincided. Just add that to the chart. Okay, so here we can see, as the stock rallies through, this price, what happens to the volume? Huge breakthrough. Goes from under 1,000 to 5,000 right there. So what we then do is, once we've established the stock has had a big volume break, coinciding with the price break, we're then looking for a usually at least a double digit return in terms of the movement. And so here we easily have that from four to over seven. Once we've established that that type of move has occurred, what we then do is we measure from the break where the volume actually came through to the peak of where the stock gets to without before it retraces. So this is called the flagpole. From the breakout point to the peak before it reverses. And this gives us an exact measurement that we can then measure from. The next step to the process is we want to see a, a retraction. We want to see the stock retrace. And in general, uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a 50% Fibonacci retracement that I'm, oh, to 61.8, which is the uh, area that I'm looking for the, uh, fib, the uh, stock to pull back to. So I'll just draw that on the chart here for us. we go. Okay. So what we can see is once we've got that first big move confirmed by volume, breakout, retracement, we then look at a target of where we can then get in between a 50 and 61.8 Fibonacci retracement. This becomes now our entry zone or profitable trade target for a trigger in. And by measuring the original flagpole, which we did back here, what we then do is we extend this line over to the 61.8 Fibonacci. And this then shows us our target for the trade. Now this is actually one that I traded. Um, I sold this a little earlier than that uh, than that extended target, and I'll talk about why in a moment. But for those of you who are swing traders that are happy to just get into a stock and let it sit, this is the type of thing where I can quite comfortably buy in between five fifty and six dollars, and just set a entry, stop loss beneath here at say five forty, and exit at nine dollars or just just shy of that, and just let the trade go. How did you create the poll? I'm Using the Metastock trend line tool, and what I'm doing is I'm drawing from vertical to horizontal, and then you can drag that around. Okay, so um, once we've extended this, this now gives us our target, our entry point, and these work extremely well because whether we're in um, bullish markets, bearish markets, consolidating markets, it doesn't really matter. When you get a stock that goes from 50,000, 100,000 shares a day to 4 million shares, there's such a huge amount of smart money going into that stock that it needs to see a return. It needs to make money. And you get these big moves where that, that, that money piles in that initial leg 
it consolidates in that flag, which is here, and then goes for at least a second blast most of the time. So even if the market's going down, take this stock, for example, had very turbulent times in the market, even in that same time frame, VTNR or Vertex Energy has been able to push up from 550 to eight bucks. So this is the aggressive way to trade flags. Things that you need to look for to avoid the false breakouts is A, firstly, make sure that the stock has had a significant increase in volume when it, when it broke out. As you can see here, that was a big jump. And what I look for is a minimum of a 500% increase in the volume one day over the previous. And if you want to be even more meticulous, you could look for a 20-day average of the volume to have increased by 500%. That's the first thing. The second thing is you need to make sure that the stock actually broke something. Okay, let's say the stock jumps up 50% and the volume goes up 500%. It doesn't matter unless there was a significant level, smart money level, like we talked about before, that was broken, either diagonally or horizontally. And if you can't identify that, go to a different stock. The volume spikes also occurred during downtrend flags. Yes, absolutely. However, I've found just personally that bull flags are, are just far easier to trade and uh, more reliable than, than downtrend flags. Uh, that's the only time you'll hear me promoting bullish uh, formations over bearish formations because otherwise I'm a, I, I love shorting <laughs> more than going long. But in flags, it's a, I'm, I'm very, very favorable of the upside direction. Okay, so there's the, there's the bull strategy. Now, one, when we get into markets like this, like what we're currently in, what we then want to do is we also want to adopt a, um, a methodology of being a little bit more conservative with our target. For most people who may be trading recently, you may have noticed that you know what stocks you'd normally get maybe an eight to twelve percent profit in a couple of days or a couple of weeks are now starting to fail. Well, this is very common when we, as we start to head closer and closer to May, June, July, the market starts to thin out a little bit. So what I generally do with all of my strategies is I normally uh, I don't change the way I trade. I just I just shorten my profit targets a little bit. So instead of looking for eight to twelve percent, I look for say six to eight percent on a on a swing trade. So with flags, the the next thing that one would need to understand if we really want to be specialists at this is to start shorting the shortening the targets to look for the higher probability level that it will hit. And the level that I use is once you've found this horizontal level and you've done your Fibonacci. What I look for is a 23.6% retracement as target one. So here you can see a rally up, we hit a high of 760 and change. We pull back to what's this? We've got uh, $4. Uh, $5.40. Sorry. So we pull it up to $5.40. So there's your entry in here. And then your target becomes a 22.3% FIB, which is at 662. So when we get these types of markets, and as we continue over the next three, four months, um, this allows us then to have a more conservative, higher probability exit where we can walk away with green in our pocket. So here you go. You get an entry here around, around uh, 550 rally up and as soon as it hits 662 or just shy of that I'd be looking at 657 you're out so we're getting over a dollar ten dollar twenty almost profit which happens in one two two days so these are the types of things where if you're just picking up you know six seven eight trades of these a month and you stick to these criteria rigidly this, this is one of the, my favorite patterns to trade 
through the summer months. Most people say sell in May, go away. There's no need to do that if you're trading flags and things like that because they are they are economies of the, their own. The whole market could be going flat. These things still just have that power behind them that allows them to really rally. Where is the setup? Where is the stop on the 550 entry? I'd be, I always be looking. Uh, risk reward is the key to any strategy. I'd be looking at uh, the most unique stop loss below that price. So we're looking at uh, 540. So obviously we're not going to pick 540 or 535. So those are numbers that everybody else picks, and we don't want to be land for the, sh for the slaughter. <laughs> so we want to look at uh, uh, different areas. Uh, so I'd be looking at 533. Now, some of you might be asking, uh, wondering about this indicator down the bottom. One of the final things that uh, really makes the um, the indicator, uh, excuse me, the, the, the pattern do well is we also need to make sure that when a stock rallies, you know, 60% or 50% or something like that, we want to make sure that it truly is a, a flag and not just maybe a short covering. Because we've all seen stocks go up 60% that, you know, maybe they're just real dogs and everyone was covering their shorts. So we, um, coming back to the smart money, the final thing that we look at to complete the recipe, if you will, is we want to make sure that the smart money is behind us. Now on the bottom, what you can see is this, uh, this kind of red line here, as well as the green and red ticker tape. And what this does is it analyzes three things for us. It analyzes um, price. So is the price making higher highs and higher lows? Secondly, it looks at volume. So is price going higher along with increasing volume, which is critical? And thirdly, is it closing in the top half of the range? If all three of those things aren't happening, we don't truly have smart money interest in the stock. So if you do not see all three of those things happening, beware. And what this indicator does for us is it tells us, is that occurring as the stock rallies? So is the smart money behind this flag or is it using the rally to sell into? And so what we can see here, and one of the things that are configured into my scan that finds these stocks, is to make sure that this indicator has turned positive prior to this break, within five days. So with all of those factors combined, that now gives us a potential trade. Um, let's have a quick look here. Question: What will be a flag pole two, three up days or more? Um, okay, well, quick answer: Avoid gap ups; those are dangerous. Two, two to three days is normally perfect, as as was the case in this uh, this stock. Do I always draw my Fibonacci from the open of the price break? Um, good question. The answer is: Don't consider time. Remember, time is, uh, is the unpredictable thing. What we're looking at is where smart money makes decisions. I don't care what mum and dad down the road are doing. What I care about is the six floors of computers whirling away in an office somewhere that nobody sits at. Um, what we want to do is we want to look at when does volume shoot in and at what price was that at. So I don't care so much about the open or the close or the high or the low. What I want to look at is when volume shot up, what price were we going through? And that is where I measured the flagpole from. The symbol on this one is uh, V. <laughs> I shouldn't this. <laughs> I traded this stock, so um, bear with me one moment. It's, I think it's VTNR, but I, I get this wrong all the time. Yeah, it is VTNR. If you want to look at another really great stock, look at Fannie Mae. I mean, that was an incredible flag. I'll, I'll actually I'll show you a couple of flags here in a second, uh, other examples of ones we've uh, traded recently. Um, can you please repeat the three criteria? I'll go over that in a second. How do we know it's a pullback and not a reversal? Well, um, how do you know it's a pullback and not a reversal? Well, you've got to look at, that's where the smart money comes in. 
Because when a smart money is buying, if I buy with $100 million, then I also need $100 million worth of sellers, right? So if I put $100 million into a stock, I'm, I'm the smart money, the system, okay? Then what we can look at is the relationship of how much money goes in over the initial stage versus how much has already come out post the three-day rally. Now, to the, to the average person, that might be difficult to visually see. Then that's why we use indicators, is to, is to analyze that relationship for us. And so where the smart money indicator comes in, which is that red line that I just pointed out to you, that is essentially doing that job, telling us, okay, hey, um, as price has been level, there's been more buying that's stuck in significant quantities than there has been that's come back out the opposite direction. Um, imagine you were sitting on a beach and you saw the waves coming in and a, a thousand liters of waves came up the beach, but only 500 went back out. Well, that water is still on the beach then. Same thing with stocks. We're looking at how much money is coming in, how much money has gone back out. And if we start to see that that red line is staying above this zero line, especially when the stock rallies up, and that tells us that there is a higher probability that the smart money is behind the move and uh, helping us to create a true big rally. So very, very, very powerful strategy. Flags, um, as we all talked about earlier, the trick is finding them. So anyone and their dog can tell you that flags are a profitable pattern. The trick was finding them. That's why I didn't really trade them for the first five years. I found it tough to find these things. Um, and it was only really uh, once we uh, partnered up with Metastock a couple of years ago that we were really able to tap into this resource because uh, Metastock really is one of the few programs that has allowed us to program a very, very specific rule set of, okay, we need this, 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 and this to happen and find the stocks that that's uh, occurring on. So we, we, we have a smart money scan detector programmed into our Metastock scan. We have the um, uh, price action, candlesticks, Bollinger's, uh, all programmed in. Uh, there are volume requirements of when certain levels of volume or the fingerprint of the smart money uh, has to have occurred within the last five days. And uh, building this basic recipe into Metastock has allowed us to, uh, to filter through the entire market each day and locate on average about 12 of these types of trades a month. And that's really allowed us now to start specializing in flags. Now, the, um, I know a lot of people are asking how we do that. Uh, I've heard from others that smart money buys on quiet days. Uh, absolutely, Steve. I mean, just remember that the job of the smart money is to drive price down on low volume and buy positions. So that's why the New York lunch hour is when smart money drives price down and, and other such examples. Okay, so just, I'm just going to bring up this... Uh, We'll come back to the live chat here in a second. If there are any stocks you want to talk about, I'm more than happy to share with, uh, my experience with those on. Okay, so. The key thing then is to, uh, is to really start looking at how we can uh, identify these and, and how we can specialize in, in uh, focusing on, in on this strategy. Um, with flags specifically, it is very important to understand the, the methodology of how we find them and keep that consistent, as well as our entry and exit rules in how we measure the poll, uh, what Fibonacci we get it in and out at, the conservative versus aggressive strategy and when we should utilize either one. Um, if we don't have that consistent rule system of how we make the decision, it's very tough to be, uh, to be consistent with results. So um, having that rule set is, is key, and that also allows us to be efficient. You know, um, we talked a lot about scanning in uh, today's Traders Summit. Uh, it is important because if, if you're not being efficient, then um, arguably you're not truly reaching your potential yet. Uh, I always prefer efficiency uh, over maximum results. So in, in that light, and the um, the workshop that we um, that we that we'll be putting on here in a couple uh, couple weeks 
is all about um, specializing in flags. A lot of people talk about May being the time to get out of the market. It is the time to be considering your strategy, but it's not the time to stop making money. When we're looking at um, the market in May onwards, strategies like flags do continue to perform because they're aggressive, breakout, smart money types of trades. Momentum trades are the ones that you want to stay away from. You know, so the moving average crosses, the MACDs, they might peter out and you might end up getting whipsawed and stopped out. But flags continue to perform extremely well. From a rating of 1 to 100, flags are ranked 3 by us. Um, and that's why we're actually offering this two-hour class coming up on uh, May 6th. It's uh, 8 p.m. Eastern. And what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be showing you uh, the way that we scan for these scenarios and going through a complete start through finish strategy based session on, on flags only. So we're not going to talk about MACDs, we're not going to talk about momentum trades, we're not going to talk about learning to trade. What we're going to be doing in this two hour workshop is a start through finish uh, course not a webinar, it's an entire course on how you can specialize and make money from flags as a specialty. So how to measure them, looking at the uh, what time frames to, uh, to look at, hourly time frames, uh, 15 minute time frames, weekly time frames, um, basically a start to finish checklist of everything we want to look at. Um, we go through the indicators we use and, uh, and what you would be, what, what's included in this is the, uh, is the Metastock package, which we're very proud to have released uh, only a week ago. <laughs> so um, this will be the first group that's ever um, had the opportunity to uh, download and install and utilize this, um, this package. So basically what you'll receive as well as this workshop is, um, is the Metastock standalone package, which has the smart money indicator in it, telling you when smart money is buying or selling, and the flag scan, that will find these stocks for you. And on average, it finds about six or seven stocks a night for you to consider looking at. And then once you run your criteria that we'll be teaching you in this workshop, you'll find that you find about two or three a week, which really cut the cheese. Okay, let's have a quick look at the questions here. Will it be recorded? Absolutely. Everything we do is recorded, and um, you will receive that basically the day after the event. And uh, one of the benefits that you'll also have is um, every person that attends the workshop is also offered the opportunity to attend the workshop again um, at any of our future events live. So um, you, if, you, if you do miss it, you can come in at a, at a later date. Okay, so look at the questions here. All right, um, can you put the link here? Yep, sure. Does the package tell entry and exit points also? Um, nice guy. <laughs> what we do is we actually teach you two strategies. One's a conservative, one's an aggressive. Um, what I said, that there is no one way to make money in the stock market. You know, like um, there is no best way. And anyone who tells you that, I would be cautious of. <laughs> um, there is, um, you have to pick a methodology that's right for your temperament. Now, um, this, the flag scan, the way I like to trade it, is I like to try the aggressive methodology. So when, I, when I'm getting into a flag, I'm expecting that um, I'm going to make at least 30%, maybe higher. In VTNR's situation, that was a 50% move um, that it's up from. Um, Fannie Mae was a 50% move. I mean, we're looking for big double-digit returns. The, the, the problem with that for some people is that um, you've got – uh, it, and with an aggressive target, you have a higher probability of failure. So for some people who are maybe more emotionally driven, um, having a couple of losses can really dramatically affect them. 
and they find that because of those losses, they start changing the, ma- the way that they're making their decisions. Um, so for that reason, we teach two ways of trading flags. One is the high profitability methodology, where we are looking for those 30, 40, 50% gains, um, and maybe the probability might only be, say, 60% of your trades achieve that. Uh, for, for, or even sometimes as high as 70. But for those people who find that that 40% of losses changes their psyche, well, then we teach the conservative method where people are able to have a much higher percentage of winners, but you make less when you do win. And that's where the conservative methodology comes in. And the, what you'll learn in that workshop is you'll find that those indicators and the, and the strategy that we teach you gives you those exact uh, entry and exit points for either route. Are you looking at time and sales and block trade prints? Uh, we do combine, um, you know, um, uh, uh, price at volume levels or volume at price levels. We do look at pivot points. We'll be teaching you that. We will go over advanced Fibonacci methods. Um, the, uh, at the end of this two hours, it is, a, it is a standalone workshop, so you don't need anything else. There's no indicators or soft, um, extra software you need or anything like that in order to make this work. It's, um, it's basically a, a full-on self-standing course. How will this work different from the one on April 29th? Um, Sandra? Oh, okay. Well, yes, we do have another workshop on the 29th that you might be registered for. That is, uh, that's a different workshop on the, um, the extreme scan. If you, uh, if you are already uh, registered for that, this is actually a separate workshop entirely based on flags. This is my favorite strategy. Of, of the four strategies I trade, this is the one that I've been doing most of. This is definitely where we're making most of our money. Um, so uh, if, you, uh, if you are somebody who is comfortable with breakout trades and so forth, this is a very easy transition. I like the way you identify the smart money. For 97 bucks, I'm in. Well, good to see you. <laughs> we'll see you there. Can you put the link in here? Uh, yeah, I feel like I typed that in. Let me do it again for you forward slash flag. I think I'm just about out of time here. Sorry, guys. I have a tendency to chat more than I should. Um, do we get a DVD of the workshop as well? Anything you need, um, we're more than happy. We have a team of uh, dedicated coaches that uh, will be available to you between now and then. If you want to actually get a recording of the last workshop we did on this topic, you just email coaching at acornwealthcorp.com or info at acornwealthcorp.com and we'll send you the recording of the last event get access to the scan and the Metastock indicator package instantly so you'll be able to start using the scan and uh, knowing how to use it before you even come to this event. Um, but if you have any problems or questions or things that you need, uh, we have people around the clock available to help you. Which of the flag patterns discussed is most reliable, most time found, and with better probability? Highest probability uh, is bullish flags. Looking for, um, and the best time to trade a bullish flag is when you analyze the index and find it's at resistance with increasing momentum divergent from the previous high. We will be talking about that, but that's when you get the highest probability of this pattern really kicking butt. Do you cover following the big money in the class again? Absolutely. Uh, we will be talking about how to actually scan for um, and find when institutions and insiders are buying with, with a plethora of other criteria that confirm they're buying a company that is set to po- uh, poised to pop. And that's why flags are very, very good with, um, with that type of coinciding research. How can you say you follow smart money without looking at smart money time and sales? Um, just remember that like, when smart money buys, um, it's like the chicken and the egg. If I'm standing on top of a mountain and I'm looking out over the horizon and see every bird and every animal flying in one direction, I don't necessarily need to know what they're running away from to know that I want to go with them. Uh, and what we've designed is, is a, uh, an indicator that, 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 that uh, scans and recognizes the pattern of how smart money moves in terms of time and sales. So I'm more interested in, in, in what they're doing versus uh, looking at the, the data points themselves. And that's what the indicators really help us to do is to, is to locate when the, the fingerprint of the smart money is heading in, a, in one direction or another. Um, what does the add-on give you after the course? The add-on gives you the, um, uh, you'll have the scan for life. So in that $97, you'll, you'll, um, you'll be able to have that scan. You've got the indicators of the smart money and uh, everything else. A private question. Uh, 
So it looks like I'm out of time here. So um, let's have a quick look here. What about smart money indicator? The smart money indicator is uh, included. Does this tool work with options? Yes. Um, DDD was a great example. Uh, day trade on Facebook two days ago was an example. Do we cover flags to the downside? Yes. And um, scan is a, yeah, the scan the scan is a standalone tool with MetaStock that you can use. Uh, if you um, and we, we do also teach you the criteria that we scan using as well. All right. Well, I'll, um, it looks like I'm well over my time, so I'll pass it back to Jeffrey. Jeffrey, thank you so much for having me. Looking forward to everybody uh, here in the workshop. You bet. Can you hear me now? I can. Can yep. you hear me, John? I can. All right. Thanks for coming in. Uh, really appreciate you. Um, uh, I have an official announcement. We have capped. The seminar room is not allowing anybody else in. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so we've capped our attendance for the day. John, thanks for coming in. Um, uh, really uh, recommend John. Uh, like I said, we're not bringing in anybody we don't really respect here. Um, let's kind of get switched back to things a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and take back.